Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I just thought I would uh, take a minute or I should say set aside time really to kind of put together a day in my life as a content marketing strategist type of video to kind of show what that looks like to me in my professional life. Uh, I just thought I would record what I can today. I don't know how this is gonna go. I've never done one of these vlog thingies before, but I'll kind of walk you through a little bit of what I'm doing right now. There's a uh, like this audio event going on on my LinkedIn right now. I don't know the people hosting it super well, but I know one of them well enough. I met her once, maybe twice. And so I'm just kind of tuning into the into this audio event. And then here on the other screen is my Evernote calendar. And I reference this a lot because it kind of tells me what I need to be doing, what I need to be working on each day. And as you can see, I almost have like these color coded days. I'm not really sure if you can see that. I'll try to find a better angle um, if not, but you'll see that I have business, business, media, media, other. And that's because when I have a lot going on and I'm not really sure what to work on first, I'll almost like assign themes to my day so that I know what kind of headspace I need to be in for the day. So I have two business days, which is where I'm doing a lot more like admin type stuff and I'm doing outreach and I'm following up with clients, any client work on my end that I need to work on is what I do. And then the media days are days like this. This is my first of my two media media days. And um, this is where I'm filming content. This is where I'm scripting stuff. This is where I'm in more of a creative headspace rather than like a bunker down and work, you know, kind of administrative sort of space, I guess. I just spent the last two days doing cold outreach, which was not fun. If I'm being honest, it was my first time doing cold outreach. And if you don't know what that is, if that term is unfamiliar to you, it just means that I was uh, emailing people out of the blue as Lauren Erickson, content marketing strategist, basically offering my services to them and trying to throw in a couple similarities or commonalities that we have, hoping that that'll increase their chances of conversion. So that was not fun. So I'm very glad to be having a media day right now. Well, it looks like one of the first things I need to do or that I should do is put together some kind of loose script or outline for another like webinar presentation that I've been thinking about doing. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what marketing strategies make the most sense for me and my brand and how to basically get more clients that way. That's not the only reason why I do content, but it's a very attractive active reason to do it for business owners, small business owners such as myself. So I'm gonna be putting together a kind of outline for a webinar to do, probably that has to do with social media since that's such a big question mark for people. That's probably what I'll end up doing um, and then I'll kind of just check in with you throughout the day. But really, this is me for like the next four hours. I, If I don't have a busy morning, I'm just gonna rot at my desk until I feel gross enough to shower. So that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep you updated throughout the day, I guess. Alrighty, so I just got done finalizing a script that I think I might actually record today. Sometimes that does happen. Sometimes I'll make a script, find that I have time and go on ahead and record it that day. And this one is gonna be about 10 ways writing a book and starting a business are similar. And I feel like I've been kind of struggling with content a little bit with coming up with stuff that I think will be engaging enough and this one I feel pretty halfway decent about. So I think what I'm gonna do is shower, uh, get ready, and then go ahead and film this and knock it out. Apologies for the echo, by the way, if you're picking that up. My cap's also broken, so I have to like dig the moisturizer out. Since this is a content marketing video, and I am in fact making content, I thought I would talk about uh, my relationship with content. I grew up being taught that you're never supposed to put any information about you ever on the internet. Facebook was all the rage, and when you're introduced to a social networking app at 12 years old, you kind of want to share your guts, right? So that was kind of interesting to navigate I think I was on there for at least 10 years, like a good 10 years. I was a fairly heavy Facebook user and then it started getting kind of weird towards the end. So I jumped shipped and went over to uh, Instagram and a lot of the content that I started doing 
was lip syncing. And I'd been doing lip syncing for a really long time. I was doing lip syncing in high school and I would post it up on Facebook and that was fun. And so I kind of started posting what I knew and that, you know, something that I knew other people liked. So that's kind of where I saw traction for myself. And I ended up having a couple reels go viral actually within the past year. One of my reels got over a million views and it was me lip syncing to Cusco from uh, Emperor's New Groove. And I bet you I got a good 1,500 new followers from that reel, and some of them are still hanging around. And I'm happy that they are, because it tells me that they don't mind my stuff so much. <laughs> but what I found is that when people start following you as a result of a viral video, it's almost like they subscribe to you because they think the rest of your content is gonna be like that, when really it, mi it might have been like a one-off thing, Maybe it is part of a collection of very similar types of content. But after that, the engagement kind of went down and it's slowly kind of been petering out since then. Like, I think I went from 2,200 followers, I think I'm down to like 1,600 now. And it doesn't bother me so much. The people who want to see what they want to see from me are sticking around. And the ones who are leaving are the ones who maybe aren't my target audience anyway. And that was kind of my first, first-hand experience with engagement over following because I personally would rather have 500 very engaged people as opposed to 2,000 very passive people or even a million. And since then, I, I still dabble on Instagram, but since then I've kind of moved over to YouTube. The shorts that I was making, the lip syncing reels that I was making on Instagram, I was like, why not just upload it to YouTube? So very, very passively, that's what I was doing. And I did that for probably a good year. And then when I went back and took a good look at the people that I had attracted, it was like 300 people, I would say. And at the time I was like, whoa, like I thought I had like a hundred people or something following me. So that's kind of where I revisited YouTube again. And I was like, you know, I should probably start posting more stuff on it because people are here for a reason. I've always wanted to get into the YouTube game. I just didn't really have much of a reason to. I had stuff to say, but no one was there to listen to it. And pretty much since then, I've sort of gradually, I've, I've made myself stick with it enough to see the kinds of reactions that I'm getting with people. And I, I personally started to see that around the 500 subscriber mark. And over the course of 10 months, from let's say July of last year to May of this year, whatever that is, my subscriber count had increased by 300% just by posting once a week. But because I care more about engagement, I calculated like, I think it was like the view count or something like that. And that went up 800% in the past 10 months. And I calculated this using a spreadsheet that I have. I think I got it off the internet for like five or 10 bucks. I am not a spreadsheet person, y'all. So since then I have designated YouTube as my primary platform, and I really do enjoy it. I genuinely do like making content on YouTube. I still shudder thinking of labeling myself as a content creator, but I kind of am one, I guess, if I had to like classify it myself. I, I don't, I still don't love that term, but it is the most recognized one, so I do use it. When I'm in a group setting, I don't really talk much. I, I just kind of observe, I guess. I'm not trying to be cool or mysterious by doing that. Sometimes I genuinely don't have anything to say, so I won't say it. When I did have something to say, the person who talked the most and or the loudest always got the more airtime. So I think that was even more of a reason for me to lean more into blog writing and journaling and writing books because the thing about a page, a blank page is as intimidating as it is, it will never interrupt you. And what's interesting now about sort of my own personal evolution with communication is that I can say what I wanna say finally, and get a word in edgewise, and they can't interrupt a video. <laughs> if I have something to say now, I can say it exactly in the way that I want to, and it still counts. That's just my thoughts about it. I thought I would just chat with you for a quick minute. Almost like on a personal note, how this has kind of shaped my life or the kind of relationship that I have with it. Okay, now that we're back in the office, sorry, I just climbed stairs and I'm a little out of breath. I think what I'm gonna do is go on ahead and get started with making my video, hang with me. But I'm gonna set you up right here and I'll just be over there doing my thing. So you can just sit tight, watch how the magic happens. Here we go. My setup pretty much consists of me cracking open the blinds to get a little extra natural light in. And then from there, I pretty much shove the computer up to my face, tilt it, increase the viewer size or whatever, 
put the camera behind it, put my microphone on a box and get to work from there. Oh, and crank up my chair to the highest level because my tripod doesn't have a lower setting. <laughs> This is not a beautiful setup, but I just finished 10 ways writing a book and starting a business are similar. I hope it goes over well. It's a little bit different from the stuff I normally talk about, but. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna save everything and get it organized into the folders that it needs to be in and um, pretty much go from there. If I have the time, I like to get into editing right while it's fresh in my brain. I might at least try to get it set up today so I have a starting point when I am ready and able to work on it. I think I've got some other stuff that I wanna follow up with today. Where did I put that folder? Oh. Did this thing save? I don't remember if I saw it save. What am I doing? Yes, it did. Full transparency. I have not monetized yet on YouTube. YouTube is my primary platform that I consistently upload stuff to, and you need at least a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours within the past year in order to be eligible for monetization. And I think I'm inching up to three. So part of the struggle with content that I make is that I'm trying to find ways to increase how long people watch my videos for so that I can kind of fast track monetization on there. Even if it's a dollar, I would be happy. But that's been the hardest part for me is just finding relatively consistent stuff that people will wanna watch. Apologies for the abrupt transition. There wasn't really a good way to end that last video, but this is what it looks like whenever I edit my videos. I use Adobe Rush, it's free and it's got all the basic stuff. Um, but what I'm doing now is I'm pretty much syncing up my external audio to the video. And I really pretty much go through the entire video doing rough cuts to get like a loose idea of how I want this video to be framed. And then I'll go back in again and do more granular editing. So that's pretty much what it is. But right now I'm just kind of setting myself up for success to work on it later. So that's pretty much it. This is what I look like, my natural habitat. So I wanna talk for a quick minute. The reason why I do this stuff, even though I'm not getting paid for it yet, I think it's important to start conversations around how the money works in creative spaces. I think creativity can be a business and businesses can be creative. I think they both go both ways and I think they can both be symbiotic. And the reason that I do what I do right now is not only because it makes me happy and it brings me fulfillment and I get to create a budding community, but I also recognize that this is a long-term play that I'm investing in right now. And in a lot of my videos, I talk about long-term marketing and I talk about organic marketing and the power of those things. So I feel like I would be a hypocrite if I didn't practice the things that I preached and I have the time to do them with where I'm currently at in my life. So even though sitting around for a couple hours editing a video is not making me money immediately, I know that if I continue to plant these seeds, one day I'm gonna wake up and find an entire field filled with crops. And it is a gamble. I mean, there's definitely no guarantees, especially when it comes to the creative space. I feel like you're just kind of going off of instinct, you're doing your research, you're, you're making educated guesses, you're getting hyper clear or as clear as you can be on the kind of stuff that your target audience is wanting to hear and making attractive content around it with strategies and with metrics and goals in place. By doing this, I'm not only practicing what I preach, right? I'm not only setting myself up to create another stream of income eventually, it's also a method for lead generation for me too, to lead into some of that more immediate business stuff that I do when I'm doing cold outreach or when I'm working with my clients, all of my contact information is on my YouTube channel. People can get my email address. They can go to my website. They can see the kind of stuff that I do. They can ask me questions. You can ask me questions at any time. And by showing up and practicing what I preach and making content as a content marketer, I, I wanna show up not just authentically, but also as someone who demonstrates that they can follow through and that they are consistent and they work hard. There's a lot of different reasons why I'm doing this, even though it looks like I'm just goofing off. To the untrained eye or to someone who, you know, is a little bit less familiar with organic marketing, all of this is work. All of this is something that I'm doing for a reason. There is, there's a rationale behind it. It's really hard to have a business that you aren't marketing. I think referrals and word of mouth is amazing. That's that's such amazing stuff to have. But how do you start the, how do you start that word of mouth? How do you get people aware of the kind of work you do, the way that you do it, and the kind of reputation that you have? You have to start those kinds of conversations and I prefer to start them 
through various forms of content with video probably being my primary one. So I just wanted to take a minute to kind of talk about my rationale for this kind of lifestyle that I'm experimenting with. I'm not saying it's the best choice, I'm not saying it's the worst choice, but I'm saying it's the season that I'm currently in right now. I really truly enjoy what I do and I fully believe that because I'm showing up in that way authentically on time every day doing the stuff I tell other people to do I firmly believe that it's gonna pay off for me one day as long as I'm keeping track of the data and the metrics and the numbers and the trends on my end I can see what's working and what's not working and adjust my strategy or my goals accordingly I don't know it's always a good conversation starter isn't it I'm gonna use this time, apologies for the long dude in the back, but I'm gonna use the rest of this time to think about what I've done so far and what I still have left to do. I think the only other thing that I need to do before wrapping it up for the day and feeling good about everything that I've done is I have some marketing ideas for a networking conference that I'm gonna be helping to put on next year. And I have some ideas that I wanna send over to uh, the host and, and her number two person. So I might just do that and then I'll feel pretty good about the day for the most part. The nice thing about these media days is that if I don't finish everything in the day that I have everything outlined, it's okay if it bleeds into the day tomorrow because I actually don't have anything to work on immediately right now, tomorrow. So if I can get that big thing out of the way, I'll feel good. But if not, it can just bleed into, you know, into tomorrow and it's fine. Usually I'll work from about eight to two, eight to three because I tend to work really deeply on anything that I do. Um, if I'm gonna work on something or I, or I have a list of things to work on, I'm gonna kind of keep chipping at it until I feel like most of it's done. So um, today has been a little more broken up than it normally is because I'm filming. So if I can just get that one last thing done, I'll feel pretty good. I use Canva pretty heavily for a lot of stuff, whether it's for myself or other people that I'm doing work for and I have the premium access and I really like it. I really don't have any complaints. Um, this isn't sponsored or anything, but I really like them. And then I'm just pouring all of my ideas into a slide deck that was already pre-made. Um, that was kind of similar in nature to what I was going for. So I'm just doing that. And then usually with anything that I make, um, I'll present it in a loom, L-O-O-M, to just kind of cut down on the amount of words I'm throwing into an email. And it's easier for me to just kind of express everything verbally anyway, and just to kind of explain my rationale behind you know, creative choices or anything. So I did that and then pretty shortly after Nick came home and when he comes home, it's usually like mid afternoon and we'll just kind of chill in the kitchen and talk about our days and you know, any wild eureka moments that we had or <laughs> anything. So this is kind of our time to connect and then after hanging out in the kitchen, we'll kind of separate and chill out and then reconvene to like make dinner or work out or whatever. So it's pretty much our day. <sighs> Well, peeps, I think I'm wrapping up. I'm, I can tell I'm getting to the end of my bandwidth, I guess. <laughs> I feel like I've changed my outfit about three different times, but I feel like that's pretty typical for me. Um, anyway, thank you so much for tagging along uh, for today's video. It was a little bit different. Didn't quite know what I was doing, but it was a fun experience nonetheless. I feel like I accomplished a decent amount today. It's about 5.15, which is a bit later than I normally work, but it was also a busier day because I was doing a lot of filming while I was working, a lot of finagling and configuring, so I guess that's to be expected. So I'm definitely past my zone of proximal development for the day. So I think what I'm gonna do now is wrap up what I'm doing start making dinner, work out, and then I'll officially be into my <laughs> evening. Definitely let me know your thoughts down below. I'm gonna be very curious to hear what you think uh, when this video comes out. And if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to drop those below as well. Otherwise, please consider liking and subscribing. If you got something out of this video by liking and subscribing, you are not only helping other people find the channel, but also letting them know that yes, this video was in fact helpful and useful. That's all I got. I'll see you in the next video. Take care until then. See you later.